There are so many amazing games for the Super Nintendo. There's Donkey Kong Country, there's Link to the Past, there's Mario, there's Kirby. But if you ask me why the Super Nintendo sticks out in my mind, it's gotta be the original Nintendo franchise, NHL 93. You see, back in the late 1800s, Nintendo made playing cards. Then shortly after World War II, Nintendo made this game called Hockey. That's why it's called NHL. It's the Nintendo Hockey League. They actually made a bunch of games before NHL 93, but they were only released in Japan because the executives believed it wouldn't translate well in the West. Shigesato Itoi took an insanely bold risk by pushing for a Western release, and honestly, that's the best decision he ever made. Look at this game, it's amazing. In this game, you play as a buffalo who has to take back Washington from the evil president of the United States, Ron Barr. It's all based on true events. It really is Nintendo's version of Metal Gear Solid. It's artistically fantastic and touches on numerous socio-political themes. It really is an amazing and defining game for Nintendo. But then... That's right, NHL 94. They made a sequel. Now unlike stupid ass Paper Mario where they changed everything, this game did the right thing by being the exact same video game, except the story is even better. After the fall of Ron Barr at the hands of the Buffalo, the ancient nation of Winnipeg becomes destabilized and is locked into a brutal civil war in which the country fights with itself to the death. This game is amazing because it really touches upon the extended NHL lore. You see, the first game only made subtle hints and clues as to the true nature of the Winnipegians, and now those all came to be further elaborated and explored in this amazing sequel. But then... That's right fellas, they made another one. NHL 95 is probably the best one yet. In this game, you have sharks fighting penguins. Like, in 1995, that would have taken balls. It's not like today where any crazy idea you can come up with can just be a video game because you said so. Fuck. Back then, people got fucking killed for coming up with stuff like that. But that's what Nintendo does. They keep on coming up with brand new ideas that nobody else is brave enough to do. And honestly, this is probably the best Nintendo sequel since Majora's Mask. Now, Majora's Mask, it's an alright game, but for some reason they added a bunch of things that weren't in the previous game, and it almost makes it like its own new game. Who the fuck wants to play a game where they added things to the previous one? Why can't they just make the exact same game? That would be so much better. NHL 96. This is hockey. NHL 97. Now this one is a little controversial. Unlike the other games that were very cartoony in tone, this game went for a more gritty and dark look. If you look at the logo, it looks a little metallic and rough. And if you look at the ice, it looks more scratchy. This dark turn for NHL was very conflicting for a lot of people, especially considering Nintendo was the Mr. Rogers of video game companies. NHL 90... Wait, hold up. NHL Breakaway 98. Now, a lot of you are too young to understand just how big of a deal this game was. You see, many people think that 3D gaming was invented by Mario. Wrong. NHL 98 actually invented the third dimension altogether. Scientists were left absolutely clueless by the sheer force of the graphical power that this game provided. It was so insane that Nintendo needed to build an entirely new console just to run it. It required 64 entire bits to play. I can't even count that high. So how do they top it? NHL 99. This game really went all out with the fan service, which is great. There are all these callbacks to the previous games. You have all your favorite NHL characters like King Edmonton. They even used the same sound effects as the previous game as like a callback. I think a lot of people saw that at the time and just thought, wow, it's like I'm back at home. It reminds me of back when I was a kid, like a year ago. There was a lot of emotion and nostalgia going into this one. NHL 2000. Now this one was crazy because they actually made it for the Game Boy. You see, before they started putting games on your gay little phones, people had to actually put the cartridge inside of their game system, which you can't even do today because people are too lazy. This game was really great. It was a return to form to the old Super Nintendo days. It was a great nostalgia trip and yeah, no, you know what? Fuck this game, honestly. Okay, we're done messing around. NHL 2001. NHL 2002. Now this one was way more advanced, so obviously they had to put it on the advanced Game Boy. Yeah, that's actually what they called it. 
And you can tell why. This is the most ambitious game in the series so far. You see, after the Sharks killed all the Penguins in NHL 95, the Devil himself rose up to challenge the Sharks for domain over the mortal world. It was considered very controversial at the time for its heavily religious overtones, with some labeling it as blasphemous, and the game would later become a case study for censorship and controversy in the media. It was so bad that they actually never released NHL 2003. NHL 2004. Now you may notice that this is the first NHL game with actual graphics, because it's on the Nintendo GameCube which uses discs. Everybody knows that discs have better graphics than cartridges. Just look, here's Rayman 2 for the Nintendo 64, and here's the PlayStation version. Just look at the graphics, it's just, it's like night and day. And look at the Dreamcast version, it's over man. NHL 2005. Now, what kind of sick fuck makes a game like this? You see, Miyamoto has always been against putting story elements in NHL games, which is very upsetting because that had always been one of its greatest strengths. And I honestly thought that it couldn't get any worse than that. And that's when they made NHL Sticker Star. This honestly felt like a complete slap in the face to every longtime fan of the series. Then, they made NHL for Wii because everyone loves motion controls. And they made NHL Color Smash. Now, this is the kind of game you play if you're a Satanist who stabs kittens. Then we come to NHL 2006. Now, NHL 2006 is hockey. 